This is Magnetic Island in tropical North Australia. There is a lot to be wary of here. In the ocean, box jellies, maybe a shark. Inland waters, crocodiles. But right now, we're trying to find a rare venomous snake. And it's a game a bit akin to finding a needle in a haystack. We're looking for this snake, the Death Adder, the ninth most venomous snake in the world. Rob, you are not going to believe this. I reckon it's one. They need us to remove it. And it's quite convenient for my study because I need specimens. It's pretty exciting. Like we gotta be there. Someone literally has a death adder in their no, house. Okay. Holy crap. How do they find them? It's in their in their room. Hey guys. We hey. got a call out. <laughs> Apparently they've got one. Probably is, we'll see. One of the backpackers place places on the island. They have had quite a few reports of death adders over the years. <laughs> Let's hope it's not a skink, because some people's <laughs> snake identification skills are a little bit dubious to be kind. <laughs> Christina is studying death adders to try to ultimately reduce encounters on the island. Oh wow, <laughs> it's still there! Yeah. What? Yeah, so that one is weakly venomous. It's a brown tree snake. Oh, is it? Boy, get regularis. Yeah. Am I happy to keep those people away? Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely good, especially, yeah, you don't know what species it is. It could be a highly venomous snake. Yeah. All right, in the box. <laughs> well, it wasn't quite a death adder, so I'll give you my card, and if you see one, I have, no idea. have a nice evening. It turned out this wasn't the death adder we were looking for, but instead a brown tree snake. And while this snake is responsible for wiping out huge populations of birds on Pacific Islands, it's hardly a problem here, at least compared to the death adder. Of course, our problem is that they are difficult to find. You can't see them. They don't move. They're under the leaf litter. That part is scary. <laughs> like this, literally sometimes in people's houses. Uh, this old fella, he's like 80 years old, he rang me up. Oh, you, you're doing the death adders, right? Yes, yes. Oh, I've got one in my living room. W would you like it? Yes, please, don't, don't go near it. I'll be right there. And I go over to this guy's place and literally it was right next to the couch. And he's like, yeah, I was sitting right there. And it would have been like this far from where the death adder's head was. Death adders are part of the culture here on the island. In fact, over 50% of the residents have in fact had encounters with them. He's striking, striking like this. And it wasn't until I'd cleared the last one that I went, holy sh right there, you know? A big part of the problem is that death adder venom is highly neurotoxic. Death adder anti-venom was produced for the first time in 1958. And prior to that production, it's estimated that 50% of people who are bitten by death adders died. And that has helped human fatalities tremendously. But it hasn't seemed to help the cats and dogs that live here. We had 10 dogs and two cats. Um, in the one year? In the one year, yes, from death adder bite. If a dog gets bitten by a death adder, how long does it have to survive? You're probably looking at half an hour. To be honest, if it was my dog and I knew that one of them had been bitten, I would euthanize immediately. To save the suffering? Yep. Yeah, it's horrible. They suffer horrendously. Mm. It's just a horrible thing. Dogs seem to be so sensitive to the death adder bites that um, many of them just didn't make it even to the clinic door, even 20 minutes from being bitten, and they were, they were presented at the clinic, but they're often dead by then, so. The stories of these pets are heartbreaking. On the way home, we stopped by a couple in the country who had two of their dogs die from death adder bites. And uh, one day I found her just out there dead. Christina's hope is that by understanding the times of the year that pets are most vulnerable, these fatalities will drop. And just as we thought we might have to tell this story without a live death adder, I managed to spot one on the road, just after dinner. I called up Christina and I was like, Christina, you gotta come back because there is a death adder in the middle of the road. With other snakes, they will actively go and try to catch prey, so they need to move quickly. These guys, their musculature is not designed for that sort of movement. However, they can strike extremely quickly. They are one of the fastest striking snakes we know. So four to six millimeter long fangs. It's one of the longer, one of the longer fang snakes. They rely on 
camouflage. They're extremely visually cryptic. I was left the What are the chances? <laughs> this is amazing. You guys have the best luck. One reason these snakes are so important to Christina is that she's trying to figure out the microhabitat preferences of this highly threatened snake species. You see, here on Magnetic Island, as well as through much of its range, the cane toad was introduced. And that's bad. In some places, this caused a drop in population of death adders by 89%. The question is why? And how do we help these snakes? But to figure that out, she needs more snakes. Early the next day, another death adder report. This time, deep in the bush. So we're on a death adder call out. They've got it at their house. It's sort of like a bush setting. And we're heading out to the more remote side of the island. There's no water or power, they're off the grid here. And so hence it's a dirt road and we need a bit more of a four wheel drive vehicle to do that. And on our way to this remote site, I couldn't help but think about this human wildlife conflict. Here's an ambush predator who lives life hunting small mammals and reptiles. It prefers large tracts of wilderness like we have here on Magnetic Island. But when we build houses and we bring our pets, there is inevitable contact. And unlike most creatures, this one can deliver a lethal bite. How can we live in tandem with these death adders? The key, it seems, is learning as much as we can about them. And that's why I'm so excited to follow Christina's research. All right, so here is a snake call out and this is a death adder. And have a look at how flat this thing gets. Very cool behavior. And then another big part of her research was milking them for their venom. Venom, as it turns out, can, in small amounts, actually be used to help treat cancer patients or stroke patients. It's a medicine. And this is a big part of her research and a huge reason why she wants to protect these snakes and to change the public's view of venomous snakes. If we killed all the venomous snakes in the world, you'd be losing that ability to extract the venom and use it for life-saving medications. And who knows what life-saving medication we'd lose with those snakes. After a week with Christina, I stopped to think about what I learned. First, these are beautiful and elegant snakes. Chances are we probably walked by many more and just didn't see them. But I did relish the time I got to see them, be close to them. There's nothing quite like being close to something with such powerful toxin, yet they choose to curiously come closer showing no sign of aggression. Western society is uh, imprinted on people's minds where a dead snake is a good snake. They have to remember that snakes are very important in the whole food chain. And while Christina's research is far from over and she's hoping to confirm all of this with some tracking data, so far she's found that there are a couple months of the year when the snakes are more active. That being March and October. And potentially if the owners on the island knew to keep their pets in those months, that might make this human-snake relationship easier. Or if nothing else, let's just hope that because of the work Christina's doing, the residents on the island have a much better appreciation for their relationship with death adders. Thanks for watching everybody. I'm really curious what you think. Do you now love death adders as much as we do? I hope you do. Maybe we changed your mind. Um, leave your comments down below. I hope as a community we can convince everybody that these are important snakes to have around. And we'll see you in the next video.